Welcome back. Before we get started with this video, I have to point out something that's very important. This video is where we're going to start diving into some of the most advanced features of real-time light and rendering inside of Unity 3. So I strongly urge you do not skip or fast forward this video. Um, close attention to this video because we're going to be going over probably one of the most important topics or most important features of Unity 3 uh, when it comes to next-gen real-time light okay so you do not want to miss any of the important details that are going to be covered in this video if there was one video not to miss in this entire tutorial this is it okay alright so with that said now what I want to talk about is one of the new features in unity 3 unity 3 introduces something called deferred rendering and there's been this kind of new craze in the industry something new that was developed uh, rather recently called deferred rendering okay all of the top game engines in the world are now starting to use deferred rendering and unity not to be left behind uh, unity 3.0 includes the ability to do deferred rendering okay so lots of people may not be familiar with what deferred rendering is maybe you read a little bit about it at the unity website as one of the new features of unity 3.0 and so on and so forth so I'm not gonna bog you down with a whole bunch of technical information for that you can read the unity manual read tech specs you can even read uh, white papers on deferred rendering on the internet they're all over the place but in a nutshell what does deferred rendering mean to you well deferred rendering means that you can now make beautiful next-gen games using beautiful next-gen lighting in your games with tons of real-time lights okay not light map lights real-time dynamic lights with lots and lots of real-time shadows okay and the performance hit that you will take is very very small it's a difference of night and day from Unity 2.6 to Unity 3.0. The difference is staggering. Okay, games that were unfeasible that you can never do with Unity 2.6 can now be done with Unity 3 very easily uh, at a very high performance. Very high frame rates can be achieved using deferred rendering. Okay, so deferred rendering gives you all this good stuff really there aren't many negative points to deferred rendering no real bad stuff it's mainly all good stuff so deferred rendering is good give it two thumbs up you want to use deferred rendering uh, deferred rendering however can't be used right now it's not supported in unity 3 for mobile games so you can't use deferred rendering on say an iphone game or an android game or something like that but since this is a next gen game tutorial we're not worried about that kind of mobile uh, gaming stuff we're worried about next-gen games for like the 360 PS3 and PC for high-end PCs and things like that so the third rendering is gonna be perfect for us I'm gonna take advantage of it and use it for this project to show you how it works and show you how uh, what kind of benefits it can give your game in terms of uh, quality and performance okay so by default unity right now is using forward rendering which is the old rendering method okay we don't want to do that because forward rendering is ugly it's not performance friendly and doesn't look too great for a next gen game in fact it doesn't look great at all with forward rendering we're only limited to using uh, shadows for a directional light which we have right now but let me show you what happens if I start to put some uh, spotlights and things like that I'm gonna go to game object create other I'm going to place a let me place a spotlight or you know what I'll place a point light just for now uh, I'm gonna use the move tool I'm gonna grab this guy here and hold down control shift and that allows me to snap him to the surface of that uh, lighting fixture right there. See that? So it's perfectly in place. And I'm just going to move it down a little bit. I'm going to increase uh, its range a bit so that it can affect, you know, other parts of my scene. So you can see the lights having an effect. Now, if I go over to shadows and I turn on shadows, either hard shadows or soft shadows, you notice that no shadows appear in my scene. If I increase the intensity, still nothing okay and then you'll see this warning message here from unity it says only directional lights can have shadows in forward rendering remember how I said that right now by default we're using forward rendering that's the problem forward rendering doesn't support shadows for these type of lights it only supports shadows for directional lights like my sunlight so that could be a big problem so in order to get around this problem what I'm going to do is use deferred rendering which is the preferred uh, rendering method in my opinion for doing a you know next-gen game so how do we turn on deferred rendering this can be kind of tricky for newcomers to unity 3 
the way that you change between forward and deferred rendering and vertex lit rendering is pretty simple. Go up to the file menu and go to your build settings. This will open up the build settings window. Okay. What you want to do here is go to the player settings. So click on that and the inspector you'll get your build settings. Now build settings we're going to talk about this in detail later so don't worry about this now. There's only one option here that we want to change. Okay, We get these different sections of options up here. Go to the section uh, that's labeled other settings. That's going to open up some rendering settings down here and this is where you can choose your rendering path. You can see by default Unity has it set to forward. Now there's three rendering paths I could choose, forward and vertex lit. Vertex lit you don't want to use unless you're doing a game for like the iPhone, something simple and basic um, that's limited on top, uh, in terms of performance. We're going to choose deferred rendering. So I'm going to choose deferred rendering. You'll notice that in the background my lighting seemed to have changed. I'm going to close this build settings window. Okay, And now you can see that I have shadows with this light. As I move the light around, shadows are being created because of that lighting fixture. Okay, That little dome shape that's right there which is fantastic. Okay, so now I have my shadows. Now, uh, point lights support hard shadows, not soft shadows. So, uh, what I want to do here is I want to change this point light to something else. Uh, I'll change it to a spotlight. Spotlights work out pretty good. And I'm going to rotate the spotlight so it's facing down toward the floor. Okay, And I'm going to take its range and increase or just decrease that a little bit to like right there. I'm going to take it the spot angle parameter and I'm going to increase that so that the spotlight reaches kind of far away. Okay. So you get kind of this effect right there. And you can increase the intensity of this light as well. So I'm going to pick something around three or four, something like that looks pretty good. You can see the amount of intensity that it has in my scene. Okay. You can change the color if you wanted to. I'm not going to, however. And the spotlight just shoots light in a certain direction. Uh, anything behind this yellow cone angle will not receive any light from the spotlight. Okay. All right. I'm also going to move it down just a little bit. Maybe. I guess right there is pretty good. That's not bad. And the angle here, I'm going to keep it about right here. Looks pretty good. Okay. So about 140, 142 looks pretty good. Uh, again, intensity you can change to. Uh, whatever you want. Okay, so the next thing that I can do here with this spotlight is change some of these settings over here. The shadow strength, for example, I can change that. If I look at the shadows being cast down here on the floor by these wooden crates, okay, if I lower the shadow strength, you can see that the shadow starts to disappear. Uh, I like to have a shadow strength of one since that looks the most realistic. And um, for the rest of this stuff, let me see, maybe I'll take the uh, the range here and increase that. I want to increase the range, that way the light reaches a little bit further into the scene, which looks pretty cool. Look at the uh, the back wall right there where those doors are, it looks pretty nice. Okay. You can turn on the, uh, having the shadows on will not hurt your performance very much when you're using the further rendering, so it's actually pretty good. Over here I have uh, hard shadows turned on. If I want to, I could turn on soft shadows. You can see how that softens up. I'm going to have soft shadows on for now. Looks pretty good. Okay. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to show you light cookies. Okay. Over here under the cookie parameter, we have none. Basically, we can use these grayscale texture maps to create light cookies. So let me show you how that works. If I click on this little round circular button over here next to uh, where it says the parameter here for, for the texture, click on that. And you can look at uh, for light cookies. Now, one of the standard assets that uh, comes with Unity is the cookies, the light cookies. And I have these two kind of light cookies over here, flashlight and flashlight regular. I'm going to use the maybe the flashlight regular. Double click on that. Okay. And if I take the spot angle and reduce it, you can see that I have this really cool shape here of the light. Uh, it just makes the light look a little bit irregular and more realistic. Okay, uh, it may hurt, it may reduce the amount of lighting though in my scene at the moment. So I'm going to switch that from flashlight regular. I'm going to go with maybe just a regular flashlight cookie, which looks pretty cool. So you can see I get this this kind of uh, light banding over here and over here on the door on the walls back there, which looks a little bit more realistic. 
I like using that. Just adds to my light and makes it look even better uh, than before. Okay. We're not going to worry about these render modes. For example, the leave this on auto is perfectly fine. That works with the forward rendering path, which we're not using, so it's kind of irrelevant. Okay. Uh, we're not going to use culling masks. Uh, one of the downsides to using uh, deferred rendering is that culling masks are very, very limited. Okay, so we're not going to be able to take advantage of the culling mask feature. But that's not a problem because deferred rendering works great anyway, so we really don't need the culling mask feature uh, anyway. Okay, so we have that light casting shadows. Next thing I want to do is I want to take that same light. I'm going to hit Control and D to duplicate. And you can go to the edit menu and you can duplicate from here. Okay, but I like to use the shortcut, which is Control D. I'm going to move this light here. I'm going to take this light and switch it over to a point light. Okay, so it lights up the inside there of that lighting fixture because before it was pitch black dark and it looked very unrealistic and bad. So I'm going to take the range of this point light and I'm going to reduce it because I want this point light to only affect that lighting fixture right there. See that? The inside part right there. That's what I want it to affect. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to have it have no shadows. So cast no shadows whatsoever. And for the intensity, this looks pretty good. About an intensity of about four looks pretty good. All right. Now I'm going to take the spotlight, which is right there, and I can add something like a flare. Okay. So I'm going to go to the flare parameter. And Unity comes with these flares right here, these default flares. Okay. Um, I'm going to take and use the small flare. And if I turn on the effects over here, you can see the cool little flare that I have right there. It looks pretty nice. Just adds a little bit of an extra touch to the light. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to create a light over here. Now you can see that I have this strange light bleeding. If I come over here to the ceiling, you can see that I have this light bleeding on the edges. Okay. Um, this can be caused based on how your geometry is set up. Right now, I have this roof piece that's blocking the light from the sun. Okay, so what I want to do with this roof piece here is I might want to move it up. Okay, let me just move my camera here so I can see this a little bit better. The pivot point is way over here. Let me just move over here. Okay, you can see the little light bleeding up there. What I probably want to do is take this little roof piece and move it up just a nudge. And when I nudge it up just a little bit, that light bleeding goes away. Okay. Now, if I come over here, trying to find more of that light bleeding, and I can't find any more light bleeding, so I think we're good. Okay. All right, that's pretty good. Okay, this wall over here also has some light bleeding. So if I take this wall, you can see I have some light bleeding on the, on the bottom right there. So what I'll do with this wall is... Instead of moving it, because I don't want to move this wall, um, that would mess up the scene. So what I want to do here is instead, I'll take this wall. Let me switch over to center mode right there. I'm going to hit Control D to make a duplicate. Now when I do that, I'm changing a prefab, so Unity's going to warn me about that. I'm going to hit Continue. I don't mind losing the prefab. And I'm going to move this new piece of wall to the uh, behind that one until it completely blocks it right there. And another thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate that wall as well. So I'm going to rotate it. And I'm holding down the control key as I rotate to rotate uh, using snaps. So once I have that one position, you see that my light bleeding down there on the floor goes away. It's perfect. All right. Now I'm going to come over here and let me see what I want to do here. I want to add another light. I'm going to add another uh, spotlight and point light combination up here. So I'll go to game object, I'll go to create other, I'll create a probably spotlight first, okay, and I'm going to use the move tool, hold down control shift, just drag that right there to snap that into position. I'm going to rotate this light so it's facing directly downward. It needs to be positioned a little bit better, so right there. Again, holding control and shift lets you position that very easily. I'm going to take the uh, range and increase it. So it's kind of going to the floor a little bit right there. And I'll take the spot angle and increase that as well. So I'll do something that looks like, something like this is pretty good. Okay. Again, you can use the cookie to make the light look a little bit more realistic. Just kind of sells the effect a little bit better. 
and I can increase the intensity right here make it look a little bit better maybe move it down to about right there looks pretty good and again you can play around with the intensities I'm gonna add shadows to this soft shadows which will look pretty good and the intensity and the color I'm gonna leave alone the white color is perfectly fine again you can change it if you want I'm gonna add that flare so the small flare to this I'm gonna take that same light hit control D to duplicate it move it down a little bit I'm gonna take the flare off of this one I don't want a second flare there so I'll hit none over here remove it I'm gonna change that no shadows switch it to a point light and I'm gonna take the range and reduce it I only want it to affect that lighting fixture right there and no shadows no flare and there we go looks pretty good okay if you want to you can increase the uh, intensity of that light um, I don't know if I want to do that let me just test it out and see how it looks no I don't think I want to do that I'm just gonna keep it like this uh, maybe I'll increase the range a little bit so the light affects the area a little bit better that looks pretty good okay I'm gonna say I'm happy with that okay so we saw how to activate the furred rendering for a scene how to play around with the lights and shadows what I'm going to do is I'm going to end this video here, and the next one we'll continue working on lights. We're going to talk a little bit about um, mimicking something called indirect illumination.